Thank you. Um, I'm not here to talk only about backends. I, I prefer talking about a bit of innovation, because I think that all of us will agree that cloud has become a standard de facto for running any backend for mobile apps. And I think that in an event like this, Casual Connect, the story of how cloud enables this to become a phenomenon is quite intriguing. But I want to talk more about the innovation that you can do. So cloud is more about not where you do your computing, but actually how. I'm going to be joined by David Zuckerman from Wix, uh, which is uh, one of our partners, customers, and uh, inspiring company that has been using our platform for a while and been ramping up and been very successful as an independent company by itself, went IPO uh, just recently in the last year. So we'll talk a little bit about them. And we want to show you how you can create a bit of that magic like Google creates for consumer world as a cloud infrastructure. Um, you mentioned, do we know who Google is? So obviously, I think that most of us do know. But not so long ago, and we're talking about 16, 17 years ago, Google started off. Most of us are old enough to remember what we did 16 or 17 years ago. At least I am. And I quite remember vividly my first interaction with Google as a search engine. And I never obviously thought to, my, to myself at that time, being a web user, What's hidden behind that infrastructure? What makes Google what it is? And you can see real pictures up on the screen from the day that Google just started and the first appearance of the web site of Google Search. But if you look, this is a, tr a real picture taken out from the computer history where it shows you one of the first racks that Google started building. Because very fast in the early days when they realized the notion of what it takes to index the World Wide Web, create copies of petabytes of storage and return uh, results it in a very fast manner. Very fast, Larry, Sergey, Earth, and all the founders of our infrastructure realized that they need to invent the wheel in some fashion. And throughout time, Google went and developed on and kept on developing a lot of hardware competency that made us the real cloud provider we are. But it, only, it didn't limit us in the hardware development. It kept on in the way we contributed to the whole innovation of cloud computing by introducing numerous types of software innovation that we had to create internally. If any of you are familiar, for example, with Hadoop, some of you will recognize on the list here MapReduce, which is a way that Google invented a mechanism to deal with big data over 10 years ago. And MapReduce is the cornerstone and the foundation block of Hadoop. So it tells you that how Google has helped the cloud computing evolve as a whole and innovate beyond just hardware. Last but not least, we probably can see, and there's a great hype about containers. We're so proud of being one of the pioneers in that space. I can tell you that we spin quite a few containers every week in Google and internally have been using it for a long time. We think that containers is the next evolution of compute as we see it. And we're developing a lot of technology and solutions around containers. So as we develop our infrastructure, and after 17 years, we don't have these small racks with different colors of cables and doesn't look the most uh, sophisticated, uh, uh, I'd say, rack. But nowadays, we have probably the most sophisticated data center clusters around the world. And the way I see it, you are all users of Google Cloud, whether you like it or not, because you're all consumers. And the way I see it, our data center is just a sneak peek behind the beautiful consumer application you were already using. If you're using YouTube, if you're using Google Maps, if you're using Gmail, and that's what makes our infrastructure so unique. We run one global data infrastructure that enables that entire phenomena that runs our applications as well as our end customers' workloads. And for you, Cloud Platform is basically behind the scenes of what is running all those applications. And that's what we're trying to help people realize that you can run as if you're on Google. What can be better than running your own infrastructure and utilizing the same network capacity and compute power that enables YouTube, Google.com, or any other assets that we have? And when we, and when we give you that access to our underlying infrastructure, we basically obviously don't give it to you as a consumer application. We give it to you as building blocks of technology call it components. I'm not going to go over the different components, but think about a world that never ends, a world that can satisfy your big data analysis. And we have a lot of customers here in the, 
in the, in the conference that are using. I urge you guys to look at a few of our partners here like AppFlyer or Kula Data that have developed a whole solution on top of our big data stack that enables them to do real-time analysis of gaming patterns or other top. You can run your backend for your interactive game. We have a few customers out here as well utilizing our servers in order to create that seamless interactions for customers as they develop that interactive mode. And last but not least, you can also utilize our platform as a service offering. And you'll see in a minute a customer that took it to the next step in order to really let Google manage everything for you. We have Mag Interactive. Last year, I presented with them how to scale an application from a single user to 50 million within two days. Not too shabby, and you're going to see them probably tomorrow, I think, or Friday. I didn't check the schedule, presenting a bit more things that they've done over the last years in terms of adding some layers of analytics and ability to interact with game and develop new type of game. And that's basically what Google Cloud Platform provides you. And we are part of the Google vision. If you, can, if you think about the way you interact with Google, some of you are customers of our cloud, some of you are not, but some of you are using Google as a monetization engine. Some of you are using actually Google to acquire new users. We work seamlessly with all parts of Google, and some of you have been in workshops that we did this morning together with AdMob team. Some of you will work with us through interacting with the Android team or the Google Play team, and that's the really what we call the wheel or the unlocking the capacity that you can do with Google. Google is not only about running your backend for your app, it's also about customer acquisition, monetization, and when working with us, we give you solutions beyond just the pure technology, and it helps you innovate even faster. Cloud has matured. I've been doing now cloud computing with Google for the last three years. Basically, that's how long we've been externalizing our infrastructure. And the way I see it is that we've matured in a way that now the level of business is big enough, but also it's less about where you're doing. We feel that a lot of the cloud computing discussions over the last couple of years has been mostly about where do I do my compute, less about how do I do my compute. You know, the story is not about I moved the client-server application from one point to a different point. It's actually how do I, the very small studio developer with four employees, at that time, like many of our customers, create a, an app that is so appealing to the consumer that I focus on it and leave the legwork and the heavy lifting for Google to support me. And that's exactly what we want you to take. And I'm so happy that we have, we have a set of customers that have developed on our platform that showcase this innovation and this uh, strengths. And one of the things that I'm happy that we have, and there's no better way of presenting a testimony for yourself, is by having a customer do that for you. So it's with my pleasure I want to introduce to you to Wix. Wix, just a, a, a bit of a snapshot from our perspective. It's, it's an inspiring customer that has grown, and we've seen that growth happening together with us. If any of you are not familiar, it's a company that creates a platform for you to edit, launch, and manage your entire web assets. And they've grown over time. And not only they've grown over time, and you can see some of the data that's presented here. In a minute, you'll hear from Wix how they took it one step further, how they've realized that our platform and the innovation we offer provides them ability to create a platform of their own that can serve customers like you and companies that are developing mobile apps or what we call casual mobile apps. So without further ado, I'd like to pass it on to David, and I'll speak to you right after him. David. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Barack. So I'm from Wix. And if you're familiar with Wix, you're probably thinking, what is this guy doing here talking about platforms? And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to talk about what we call the Wix media platform. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about Wix. Wix is one of the largest uh, site creation platforms in the world. We have about 60 million users, and those users create absolutely amazing things. They build sites for their businesses, for their vacations, for their children, about their pets. And they do it amazingly and easily with our, uh, with our editor, Brock, if you could. Oh, it's, it's so nice that I have you know, the guy from you Google. You have your this. own personal clicker here. That's, that's amazing. So they do it uh, with the combination of these amazing templates. And funny enough, we have a lot of templates for, uh, for gaming. They do it through a combination of these amazing templates 
And they also use our HTML editor that anybody can use. Anyone at all without any technology skills can come in and you can build an absolutely fantastic, beautiful site. Our army of designers make sure that the templates are beautiful and because this product is so easy, everyone from your grandmother to your children to you can build an absolutely amazing site. And this is our core competency. This is what we do. This is what we do exceptionally well. We enable people to build fantastic sites. And we had a really funny problem a couple years ago. We've been around about seven years. And the problem that we had was that our users uploaded too much data. And, and we knew, we had a sense that, you know, this is a content creation tool. Our users are going to upload images of, you know, their product catalog for e-commerce, uh, pictures of their cats, pictures of anything they could po possibly imagine, video, audio as well. And we were a little surprised by uh, the amount of uh, information. If you could go to the next. So this is, this is amazing. I'm going to bring him to all my presentations. So to give you a sense of where we are today in terms of scope, our users upload 1.5 terabytes of information every day. That's a lot of information. And this is all media. And through these 60 million sites, all of this information correlates to about 35 terabytes of information that we serve on a daily basis, about 1.5 billion HTTP requests. This, this is a lot. And you know, we've, this is the best problem to have, growth that you cannot uh, cope with. And our first version of the media platform the very first version that we built had an interesting problem. Our CPUs were all pegged at 100%, and our users didn't see the vacation photos. They didn't see e-commerce. They didn't see anything. And we realized, OK, let's learn from these mistakes that we've made, and let's try a second platform. And we tried a second platform. And this platform was, was good. It was built on a lot of really great infrastructure. We ran our own data center. And we ran into a really funny problem, batteries. Our RAID controllers in our servers died. Why did they die? The batteries on the RAID controller burned out. And they all burned out right around the same point. And we called our data center, and we said, guys, you have to replace the batteries. And they said, we're, we're sorry. We don't have them. We'll have them in a day. And we realized this does not work. We need to leverage someone with a lot more infrastructure and a lot more power. And that's where we are today. Uh, we've built our third generation media platform on top of Google Cloud. And it's been an amazing success for us. And if we go to the next, perfect. You can see that we've checked off all of the major boxes here. And before we really talk about this, what is Wix MP? WixMP is our battle-tested internal platform. This is what we use on a daily basis to serve all of the media. It does real-time image transformation. It does audio and video transcoding. It's using a CDN. It basically handles all of the problems that we've spent the last seven years solving in a nice, convenient uh, package. And as you can see, it uses all of the best bits of the Google Cloud Platform. We've got App Engine, Compute Engine, Cloud Storage, Data Store, all of these things that you want to leverage. You want to let Google take care of this so that you can focus on your core competency. For us, it's building amazing uh, sites for our customers. For you in the audience, it's building amazing games. You want to focus on what you're fantastic at and let yourself build on other pieces. And this is really where we, we believe fully that we're all building platforms. We want to build platforms. You want to build platforms. And for us, we realize that infrastructure as a service and open source software, while amazing, they provide amazing things. They're the backbone of so many great services that we consume every day, are not enough anymore. They're not enough unless you're building the really low-level foundation of the internet, like, uh, like these guys here. It's not enough. What you really want to focus on is building your application on top of platforms and APIs. You want to leverage all of the amazing things that other people have done. And that's where we are today. We have realized that the same pain, the issues that we had as we were building our platform, the issues we had as we were dealing with growth, growth that we hope everyone else has a chance to suffer through, we want to take all of this technology, bundle it up, and give it to you in a way that you can just consume it. And this is the Wix Media Platform. 
It's a single box. That's all it is. All of the uploading, all of the image manipulation, everything in real time, all the CDN, everything you could possibly want, the same things that you know, we, li we like to say, don't try this at home, the same things that you would have to build to solve this problem is just a platform that we can run on top of GCP that you can deliver to yourselves. We have amazing, amazing partners so far. Uh, we're running with uh, castle builders that produce unbelievable uh, books and interactive experiences, uh, walking app, which is a fantastic augmented reality application. These are all people that have had to solve the same problems. And just think about it like this, a very simple example. Let's take your HTML5 game. It runs on the browser. It's absolutely amazing. You have 500 kilobytes of assets. It's not very much. You have to work with that across mobile. You have to work with that across browser, across uh, tablets. The matrix there is huge. Those f the uh, 500 kilobytes of information scaled across 50,000 unique users is 25 gigabytes of information. Do you want to be the ones who have to you know, come up with that infrastructure? You don't. You want to produce your game, get as many customers as possible, and get your work out to everyone that you possibly can and not let infrastructure like this stand in your way. And we hope that as we go on, more and more people will leverage the work that we've done and enable everyone to build exactly what they want and not focus on the details. And it's available today. It's the world's, really the world's fastest, most scalable, most robust media platform. Again, battle tested, built by us, not as a product that we want to sell first, but as something that we realized everyone is going to face the same challenge, and why reinvent the wheel again and again and again? We're past that point. And with that, I'm going to hand it back over to, uh, to Barack. Thank you so much, David. So inspiring. I've been working with uh, this company now for four years, uh, and I saw the journey. And this is exactly they're fulfilling the vision that we're fulfilling ourselves. We started the data center business not in the sake of becoming a cloud provider. We started to build our own backbone in order to support our consumer heritage. And over time, we understood that we've created something that is beautiful and worth sharing with the greater public and businesses to exploit and to take advantage of. And then you see a company like Wix bringing in their own knowledge and realizing very fast that, wait a minute, are we in the data center business or are we in the web content creation business? And then bringing their own added value and creating their own platform on top of that, that's a vision come true. That vision is actually accelerating innovation. I didn't talk much about, but we are also extremely proud that we're not only innovating at the level of the technology, of hardware, network. We're probably the only non-telco company out there in the world running their own uh, transatlantic or trans-Pacific cables uh, in order to support our data center networking and capacity. And one of the things that over time, we're innovating is also business practices. We're the first company in the cloud world to introduce sub-hour billing, meaning that you don't pay for a full hour of compute. You actually pay us per the minute. Or we are the first to introduce the same discount, which says you do not need to enjoy a, be a greater price by prepaying or reserving capacity with me. You can enjoy that by the end of the month when I realize how much capacity you've actually consumed. So that type of the innovation that we're fostering and promoting and in order to get you guys all a bit more excited and engaged, we come in peace, as we say, and we come bearing gifts, and we are offering today $5,000 for all participating in indie prize competition or ID showcase presenters here. We have somewhere around here uh, uh, a booth. It's not too far. It's in the main hall or in the second one, and we're more than happy if you, can, if you want to come and claim your credit Come register, speak to one of our guys. We have quite a bit of Googlers around here uh, attending the conference, and we're more than happy to bear these gifts for you. I think that we have just probably a few more minutes if... if we have 10 minutes. Oh, my God. 10 minutes. That's a lot. Eight minutes. I was in the previous presentation by Facebook. I must say, the crowd was bigger, but I didn't hear any questions. Let's see if you guys, even though you're a smaller crowd, can get a bit more questions. Uh, David, if you want to join me up here, but any questions to David, myself, about Google, about Wix, about cloud, life, weather? I'll start off with the first question. You, um, without going to two specifics, how do you actually sort of charge for it? Is it charged by bandwidth, by computing power, by box? Uh, that $5,000, how will it get spent? First of all, wisely. Okay. Um, but you know what? It's a great question. And 
I don't know ma how many of you know, but you probably can use $5,000 nowadays if you're running just a web asset. I'm not talking about a backend for a mobile app. A very a web content page that even has quite a bit of visitors will not hit that credit for the full year, I must say. So it's a lot of money. Uh, the way we charge is it's everything consumption based. And that's the model of cloud and why it's so appealing. It's truly elastic. You pay for what you use. You turn on the light, you pay for the light. You're, not tra you're traveling away from the house and no e electricity is consumed, you don't pay for it. So the same concept applies to cloud. And we're really important about that it will be truly elastic and you pay for only what you use. And yes, to your question, it depends on what you use. So there are some applications that are more uh, data-driven and more writing away more data to a database. So their factor, probably their price, will be highly uh, fluctuated by the amount of writes that they make to a database. Others are really heavy on compute, so you pay based on the amount of virtual instances and configuration you run, and then you might have just pure storage costs. So it's probably usually four or five key variables, and it depends each application what it does. You know, Wix gets a bill from us every month, and um, they can share also that it varies between different components and based on the evolution of your platform yeah, as well. It, it absolutely does. Uh, recently, we just had an ad in the Super Bowl, and we had a spike. And you know, since we're built on this elastic platform, as Barack said, we could plan for it. We did the little bit of contingency planning and load testing, spun up extra instances to make sure that we could handle any load. And our electricity bill this month will be a little bit higher. Uh, but that's the beauty of it, is that you can spin up and then spin down as necessary. It's absolutely fantastic. So what about uh, education? If, consuming a, a tool, you need to learn how to program the APIs, all the rest of stuff. What services do you provide to educate people about how to use your services? Well, first and foremost, we're probably increasing the level of interaction with the developer community. I'm pr I'm, I'm in charge of our business for cloud platform, but we work seamlessly with our DevRel program that reaches out to a lot of developers. We have sales engineers now present in most main hubs of development around EMEA, and we do a lot of meetup, hackathons. Customers like Wix are also doing hackathons of their own where we support. We did one recently in San Francisco and other places. We're investing tremendous amount of con uh, online content to make it seamlessly for you also to just enrolled uh, directly with uh, programs like Udacity or any other and, and, and enjoy our classes. But education, I must tell you that it's funny enough, we're being mostly educated by our developer community because they, they are voting with their hands. The reason that, or the way we develop the languages we support is based on the popularity of what developers are using. So, you know, it's not a secret or it wouldn't be a surprise that probably one of the biggest focus areas now is how do you support faster Node.js? Because obviously a lot of developers are shouting Node.js, Node.js. So that's, I think, that it's... Uh, two-way street in terms of education. We're being educated by the developers, but we're trying to show them the way. You want to add anything on that? Or You're in charge of developer experience, by the way, for Wix, so you, I, you I, know I, that I as am, well. Actually. Yeah, it's, uh, it's absolutely what you said. You really, in some cases, you want to build the product and predict what people want, but at the same time, you have to listen to the developer community and hear what they need. And funny enough, on the Node.js side, I can say that we are one of the customers that's been pushing on Google to have better Node.js support for things that will come in the next year that will be very interesting for developers. But uh, yeah, you have to pay attention to the community. You have to educate, find out what they want, and build on top of that. Yeah. Yeah, I would just, to complete, regardless who we speak with, uh, the traditional enterprise to the newest startup, to the casual social developer, I think that we are seeing it quite across the board that it's always mobile first. That's a strategy that we've seen, and I always call it that mobile has been the, uh, uh, the fuel, the injection for cloud computing as a whole. I think it stretched the limits of any IT infrastructure, especially if you're looking at traditional uh, IT shops, and we love that, because I think that with mobile coming into reality, it pushes the envelope in terms of the way you consume cloud. Okay, well, I think we've officially run out of time, but Google are uh, here all week in the uh, room towards the end. They're running a series of workshops. And yep. I, are you guys um, will be there to answer questions as well? Yes, we'll be, uh, we'll be there tom uh, all uh, for the rest of the conference. And tomorrow, uh, also, we're giving a talk with the rest of Google about how best to use our infrastructure and their infrastructure. Okay, well, thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Good job.